So, you're hoping to play a class like the Armorer Artificer in Foundry, but quickly realize that neither the class or the subclass are included in D&D 5e's freely available rules. You've learned how to make each of the class's features in an earlier tutorial video, and you've safely stored those features in a shared compendium to use in each of your game worlds. Links to both of those tutorials in the description. But now, you want to create a proper class or subclass item that adds everything to your character sheet automatically as you level up. Let's look at how to accomplish this with the D&D 5e Advancement System. Before you start, you'll want to have a feature item created for each of the class or subclass features before you begin this process, and you'll want each of them to be stored in a shared compendium. Again, check the links in the description if you need tutorials on how to do either of those things. You can always go back and edit the features from within the shared compendium if you need to make changes, so don't worry about getting them perfect right away. With that said, first, head over to your Items tab and create a new item. Put in the name of the class or subclass you want to create, and choose the class or subclass item type depending on what you're making. The only real differences between the two during setup are the Details tabs, which we'll cover in a moment, and that classes will allow you to add hit points as an advancement type, and subclasses will not. The Description tab of the item allows you to add text or images as you please. You can put just about anything you want here without having to worry. The Details tab has more important information. If you're creating a class, this tab is where you will set the identifier. This is how the class will be referred to by other Foundry items, so make sure you type it correctly. Identifiers may only contain letters, numbers, hyphens, and underscores. It's also good practice to make everything lowercase for simplicity. So here, we'll just leave this as Artificer, which was filled out for us. The rest of the class details can be filled out below, including the hit die type, spell progression, spellcasting ability, saving throw proficiencies, and starting skills. Note that, as of this recording, saving throws and starting skills are purely informational and are not yet marked automatically on the character sheet when you add the class. You'll have to mark them manually, but it's good to have that reference. If you're creating a subclass on the other hand, the details tab is a little bit different. The subclass has its own identifier that works in the exact same way as before, but it also has a class identifier. This needs to match exactly to the identifier of the class that the subclass belongs to. So in this example, this subclass needs to use the artificer's identifier, which is artificer. Beyond that, it's quite simple. If the subclass happens to provide spellcasting, like the arcane trickster for example, you can set that in this tab as well. Going back to the class, now we move on to the advancements tab. This is where we tell the item which features to provide to a character and at which levels. Let's go ahead and click the plus icon and add a new advancement type. We want to add all our features we created previously, so for that we can choose the grant items advancement because Foundry considers features to be a type of item. From here, you can customize this advancement entry. We can change the name to something like features if we want, give it a different icon, which I'll skip, and set which level we want to give the character the features. There is also an optional checkbox that, when checked, will allow the user to opt out of any items offered in this step. If left unchecked, all of the items will be granted as normal. Now for the meat of the advancement, adding the actual features. At the bottom here, you can see there is a place for adding any items we want. So, we can navigate to our shared compendium where we've stored all of our features, and simply drag and drop them into the advancement. By dragging the item from our shared compendium, the advancement is linking to the item in that specific location, which means no matter what game world we're using, as long as our shared compendium module is activated, the class item will be able to find the features no problem. In this example, at level 1, the Artificer gets the magical tinkering and spellcasting features so I'll drag those two in. Once you're done, you can go ahead and close the window. Since artificers also optionally get firearm proficiency, I can add a separate entry for that and tick the optional checkbox like this. It's that simple. Another advancement type we can add is called a scaling value. These are custom values that change based on the character's level. Let's go ahead and add one and take a look. As you can see, we can give the scaling value a custom name and icon just like before, and we have a plethora of other options as well. We can set the scale type to a variety of different options. Anything allows you to put whatever you want into the fields on the right. Numeric allows you to put a normal integer into the fields. 
you'll notice that when you put something into a field, the rest of the fields auto-populate with that same entry. So all you have to do is enter data at the levels where you want the value to change, and the scaling value will assume that the value remains constant until you hit a level with a new value. The dice type allows you to input not only a type of die, such as d4, d6, d8, etc., but also allows us to specify the number of dice if we so choose. And lastly, the distance type allows us to input a number that represents a distance using a measurement unit of our choice. Once you've selected your scale type, you need to input an identifier for the scaling value. This works exactly like the identifiers for the class item, so remember, letters, numbers, hyphens, underscores, no spaces. And keep it all lowercase. This identifier is how you will refer to the scaling value in other places. For this example, the infusion's known scaling value can be referenced with at scale.artificer.infusions-known. Using this tag in a formula will automatically input the correct number based on the character's level. And that's all it takes to set up a scaling value. If you're making a class item, there's one extra advancement type, and that's hit points. This is the easiest type by far, as all you do is select hit points, give it a name if you want, and set a class restriction if necessary. It will pull the hit die type from the class details tab that we set earlier, and it will populate each level automatically. And just like that, your hit points are done. Once you've finished that up, the process is exactly the same for setting up a subclass. Simply link the features, set up scaling values if it needs any, and you're all set. We're almost done, but there's one last thing to note about class advancements. When you've finished your setup, you might be tempted to drag your new subclass items into the class advancement directly, hoping that it will automatically add the subclass to the character sheet. Unfortunately, as of the publishing of this video, this feature is not fully supported yet and you should refrain from doing this. You'll simply have to drag a subclass item onto the character sheet separately once the character reaches the appropriate level. However, this feature is planned in an upcoming system update, so if you're lucky enough to be watching this in the future, the developers may have added that feature in. You can join the community discord to get more news about system updates. In the meantime, you could create another item called Artificer Specialist and drag dynamic links for each subclass item into the description field. Then, you can add this item into the class advancement which will serve as a reminder for the player to select a subclass. Just make sure they drag it onto the sheet after the class advancement finishes for that level. And that's all you need to know about creating advancements for your classes and subclasses. Let's skip ahead a bit and look at the finished product. As you can see here, this is a finished class with all its features and scaling values. Once you've finished setting up your class or subclass item, store it away in a shared compendium with the rest of your things so you will always have access to it. From there, it's easy as ever to add them to a character sheet. All you have to do is drag and drop the class item onto a character sheet like this. Once you do that, you will be prompted through a level up process that goes through all of the advancement steps you set up. And all of the features are added to our character sheet. Once we level up to the appropriate level, we can then drag our subclass onto the sheet after the level up is complete. If you have everything set up correctly, you will see this little arrow connecting the class and subclass items. From then on, every time you level up the class, both the class and subclass advancements will be added automatically, and your character is ready to go out on adventures. One last thing to note is that items that have already been granted by a class or subclass will not recursively update if you update the original item inside your compendium. They are now separate items. However, updating the item within the compendium will update the item's link inside the advancements. So the next time the class or subclass grants an item as part of the advancements, it will always provide the latest version. And with that, you now know how to make your own custom features in Foundry, store them safely in a shared compendium, and then turn those features into fully automated classes and subclasses that make character creation an absolute breeze. Not only does this work incredibly well with official content, but it can also be used to make completely homebrewed classes or subclasses. That's the kind of versatility you get with Foundry. Thank you so much for watching, and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. Until next time, take care.